Hey gang, Kawaii50 here. While Dragon Ball Sparking Zero has been a freaking blast to play, there is of course the age-old question everyone is going to ask. With 182 characters, why was an X character or Y character or Z character included? Well, I'm going to throw my hat in the ring with some of those suggestions and talk about a few characters I would personally like to see in Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. Now disclaimer one, like and subscribe. Also disclaimer two, I'm not going to try to pick anyone that would seem very, very likely in my recommendations here. So you're not going to be seeing the likes of Gamma 1, Gamma 2, Beast Gohan, Orange Piccolo, certain characters in Dragon Ball Daima, because we know a lot of these characters are shoe-ins for someone we are going to get down the line. No, what I want to talk about are characters that aren't in there right now, that would seem like, why weren't they included in the roster immediately? Ranging all the way to, you may be the only person that wants that character ever, but I just think they'd be interesting to include. That's half the fun of Sparking Zero. Basically, everyone is here, no matter how insignificant. Asterisk, supposedly. So hopefully this video entertains you. Hopefully I mention a character that you think would be really interesting to include in the game. Super 17. I was absolutely shocked that we never saw Super 17 included with any of the GT characters. He seems like such an easy shoo-in. He seems like a character that should always be in there. I mean, he was in the previous Budokai Tenkaichi games. Why wouldn't he show up in Dragon Ball Sparking Zero? Now, you potentially might argue Justin, not a lot of people really liked the Super 17 arc. It's kind of regarded as the lowest point of Dragon Ball GT with the way it is implemented. But I still think Super 17, barring all that stuff, is an incredibly cool character. 17, of course, was done some amazing justice in Dragon Ball Super, but I would like to see his futuristic evil counterpart make a return. Plus, for those of you that are abusing Android 19 and Android 20 and ranked right now, he'd probably be just as broken as them, if not more so. Now, the next character I really would like to mention is one of my personal favorite Akira Toriyama designs. A character many of you might consider fairly minor, but a character I really, really enjoyed, and I was really excited to be able to get in Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle recently. And that is going to be the horrible Jiggler, also known as Booyan. Now, if you didn't watch OG Dragon Ball, you probably don't know who Booyan is, but he is General White's secret weapon and potentially pet that lives inside the Muscle Tower. Booyan is quite notably the very first character in all of Dragon Ball history to be able to take a direct hit from the Kamehameha without suffering any damage. And he was also the very first extraterrestrial character that Goku had ever fought. So Booyan, despite his fairly minor role in Muscle Tower, he honestly has a lot of prevalence and a lot of importance, at least from that point of view, based on how he has interacted with Goku. So I think Booyan would be super fun. He'd be super bouncy. He'd have his little electricity antenna ability, lots of elasticity. I think he'd just be a super neat character to play as. The next thing I also have to wonder is where is Mercenary Tao? Again, noted Dragon Ball character, but I think a lot of OG Dragon Ball characters need to show up in Sparking Zero. This famous assassin who notably charged 10 billion zenny per kill is a legendary assassin that Goku ended up defeating in the Commander Red Saga. Tao Pai Pai is famously powerful. He is the younger brother of Tien's master, Master Shen, and he is just absolutely insane when it comes to the damage he's able to deal out. Famously able to break a post, throw it, and then hop on that post and ride it all the way to, you know, wherever he needs to go. Mercenary Tao is an absolute force to be reckoned with. He does eventually end up turning into a part cyborg to continue to augment his assassin abilities, but, you know, that is just another interesting little tidbit and could potentially be, if they wanted to, an alternate version or transformation of Mercenary Tao. So that would be super duper neat to see. I really like seeing uh, Tao Pai Pai whenever he ended up showing up in Dragon Ball. So I think he'd be just a really nice inclusion. Maybe not that strong, but hey. Another 
fairly insane character to include would be Arali Norimaki. Arali is, of course, one of Toriyama's first major protagonists, an android that is the protagonist of the Dr. Slum series. And she also showed up as a supporting character in the Dragon Ball manga and even had a fairly hilarious gag episode preview in Dragon Ball Super. She shows up and gives Goku and Vegeta some major, major trouble. She cannot be defeated as she runs on gag manga logic. Now, considering Arali's actual power with her ability to use gag manga logic, she would probably show up as an incredibly high cost character, maybe an 8 or a 9 or a 10 dragon points just because she has the ability to do things like fly around the world super duper fast, she has crazy ridiculous strength, uh, she is able to just completely go toe to toe with Goku and Vegeta and Goku even wants to fight her again. She can split the earth in half. It is ridiculous the amount of gag power that Arali Noromaki has. It's kind of like a similar comparison to the most rec more recent manga One Punch Man. The fact that Arali potentially couldn't be defeated is similar to how Saitama can never technically be defeated. It's part of the gag. It's part of their power set. It's just kind of the way that it's going to end up going. But I think Arali is silly enough that as long as they made her a super duper high cost, she could create some very interesting matches in Sparking Zero and probably be an excellent go-to character to taking down all those rampant Vegito and Gogetas. And now here's where I ask the question, where is Android 21? I'm sure many of you are going to immediately have PTSD when I said that, if you have played Dragon Ball Fighters, because Lab Code 21 is known to have been a magnificent scourge upon that game, being basically an auto-include in any sort of teams. But if you personally haven't played Dragon Ball Fighters, Android 21 is a very beloved character in the Dragon Ball Fighters game and now in the Dragon Ball franchise as a whole. She is insanely popular. She has some crazy powerful abilities. She's an android with the ability to transform into the Majin. Like she can become a Majin like Kid Buu. It is just absolutely absurd the power she can, you know, bring to the table. Super fast. Crazy Key Blasts, able to transform people into cupcakes and eat them, just like Majin Buu was able to, and plus there is a good and evil version of her to boot, so plenty of opportunities for different alternate costumes. I feel like the second Android 21 is announced in Sparking Zero, if at all, the entire internet is just going to collectively explode. And finally is a manga exclusive character, which I hope would open the door to having a bunch of other manga exclusive characters show up in Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. Now we really want Dragon Ball Super to continue. We want to see some of these arcs that ended up showing up in the Dragon Ball Super manga. A lot of these arcs and a lot of these antagonists have been fairly well received. My personal pick would be Granola the Survivor. Granola from the Serialin race. And yes, I did not make any of that up. That is entirely the naming convention Toyotaro and Toriyama decided to go with. Uh, Granola is a bounty hunter who swore revenge on the Saiyans. And he is literally the strongest in the universe, even stronger than Ultra Instinct Goku at the end of Dragon Ball Super's current anime arc even stronger than Super Saiyan Blue Evolution Vegeta. Why didn't he show up in the Tournament of Power? I mean, your guess is really as good as mine, but because Goku was in charge of gathering people and didn't know Granola existed, I'm going to say that is likely the reason. Granola has a super evolved right eye and is able to take some staggering sniper shots with pinpoint accuracy. He goes toe to toe with both Goku and Vegeta, forcing them to unlock new levels of power to be able to end up actually being able to fight him. And by the end of the arc, as was predictable with Broly, Granola ends up becoming a sort of pseudo ally that I would definitely like to see more of. I think Granola provides some very interesting long range key blasts, some very interesting magic and abilities he could use to give himself things like energy shields, fire manipulation, he can use instant transmission, he can go ahead and use a cloning technique like piccolo, finger beams, full power energy waves, telekinesis, attacking vital points like freaking Neji Hyuga from Naruto. 
Granola has a ton of crazy abilities that would make him a formidable force to be reckoned with. Hopefully, we end up getting some manga-exclusive characters in Sparking Zero. I've seen some rumors going around of characters like Moro and all that, but I would personally really like to see Granola. Anyways, gang, those are a few of my picks. Let me know if there's anyone you might want to see in Sparking Zero in the future down in the comments section below. Let me know what your six dream DLC characters are, or if you're just excited for someone we know is already a guarantee, like Beast Gohan or Orange Piccolo or anybody like that. Let's go ahead and continue to share our excitement about this game together. If you enjoyed the video, please also consider checking out my Discord, my Patreon, and my Ko-fi. Huge thanks to everyone on all those platforms for their support, and a big thanks to you here on YouTube for watching the video to the end. Anyways gang, that's it for me, Kawaii50. I hope you all have a phenomenal day, and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care, and bye bye.